Happy new bike day. Your brand new Rip Rock has arrived. There's a detailed assembly guide included in your box. Use this video alongside to get your Rip Rock ready to ride. Let's get this rad new ride set up so you can hit the trails with confidence. First, you're gonna need to unpack it. Open the tabs at the bottom of the box. Then lift the box up and off the bike. Open the small parts box and you'll find your tools. Manuals, flat wrench, torque wrench, pedals, reflectors, and your hex bits. Everything you need to build this beast. There's going to be some packaging attached. This is going to make assembly easier. Remove the handlebar from center packaging. Then carefully lower it so it can hang next to the bike. After that, undo the tabs on the bottom of the tower. Then pull it down and off the wheel. And you've got a cardboard bike stand. But before we start wrenching, let's get to know our torque wrench. This helpful little wrench is super important. It lets you know how tight your bolts need to be to keep your ride safe. With no tension, the lever arm will match up to the white line with the gauge reading zero. Turn the lever till you feel resistance. For the right amount of torque, keep turning till the pointer is lined up with the correct numbered line on the torque gauge. Be sure not to touch the gauge with your finger or you'll get a false reading. All right, now let's take care of the handlebar. Loosen and remove the bolts and washers to remove faceplate pieces. Place the handlebar and replace the faceplate pieces. Make sure the holes are lined up. Tighten each faceplate using the hex bit and don't forget the washers. Now, line up the handlebar by centering the S logo and adjust the lines so they intersect in the middle. It's wrenching time! Grab your torque wrench and tie in each bolt a half turn in an alternating cross pattern. Keep repeating the half turn pattern till your bolts are torqued to 5.2 newton meters, just slightly past the five mark on your wrench. Once things are nice and tight, double check to make sure everything's lined up with the front wheel. If the stem needs to be straightened, just loosen the bolts and line it up with the front wheel. Once everything's lined up, we torque it to 5.2 newton meters. Hold on to your butts, it's saddle time. Grab your four millimeter hex bit and loosen the seat post clamp. There is an option to route your dropper post if you purchase one later. Best to have the pros at your specialized retailer install that equipment. Before we fine tune the saddle height, we first need to set it to a position that looks about right and torque it to 6.5 to seven newton meters. With the rider sitting, adjust the height so they can touch the ground with the top of their foot with a slight knee bend. When you adjust the height, make sure not to go past the minimum insertion line. Once you've found the sweet spot, line the saddle up with the center line, then retorque the seat collar to 6.5 to 7 newton meters. You can't go anywhere on your fancy new bike without some pedal power. Let's get started. Grab your flat wrench and your pedals. See the L and R markings? That means left and right. Just like the sticker says, the pedals are threaded differently. Grip the axle to thread the pedal in by hand. Right is righty tighty and left is the reverse thread so it'll be the opposite. Tighten until you feel tension. Then you're going to turn the bolt to 22.5 degrees of rotation. You're doing it right if the tool leaves an impression on your palm. Follow the same steps for the other side. Now you've got some pedal power. Next up, let's check the reach of the brakes. If your rider's having trouble, you can adjust the brake levers with the thumb wheel to find the sweet spot for your brake reach. Find a level of feel that's comfy for your rider, but the lever must not touch the grip when squeezed. Contact your specialized retailer if you can't find the right feel. Visibility is super important for any ride. Grab the two reflectors and use the Phillips screwdriver to install them. Remember, the white one goes in the front and the red one goes in the back. If you're going to get moving, you gotta know how to change gears. On the right side of your handlebar, you'll find your two gear shifters. The top one lets you shift into a higher gear and the bottom one lets you shift into a lower gear. 
Easy peasy. Now before we start ripping, we gotta do a safety check so your bike is tip top shredding shape. If you have any issues, reach out to your local authorized dealer. First, make sure the seat post, stem, handlebar, and wheels are nice and tight. Give everything a good pull and twist to make sure nothing is moved out of place and everything is aligned. If not, go back through the steps for assembly. Next, check the saddle height again to see if it's the right height for your rider. It's time to pump up the tires. For the most terrain, 25 PSI is a good starting point, but be sure not to overinflate. 40 PSI is your max. After that, give the wheels a spin to see if they spin freely. Looking good. Next up, your stem, give it a good look to see if they're still lined up. If anything had to be readjusted, be sure to double check the torque of each bolt. And that's it. Your rip rock should be ready for dirt, gravel, mud, and whatever you throw at it. Now grab your helmet and start ripping. <laughs> 